Diana 350 Magnum Classic Review by Air Gandhi. Servus, thanks for dropping in. It's time for another review and today I'm going to show you this stylish and slim rifle, the Diana 350 Magnum Classic. You can get this gun in different versions. There's a Panther version with a synthetic shaft. Um, the classic version has a slim and long beechwood shaft made for left and right handers. We'll do it as always. We take a close look at the gun, we'll measure the trigger weight, we'll do a crony test and a shooting test and at the end I'll give you my result including if and for who I can recommend this gun. Let's go! Let's start at the front end of the barrel where you can see the front side with a red stick called True Glow Fiber Optic. The front side is red, the rear side is green, which offers great contrast. Um, it has a higher visibility compared to a regular iron sight, especially if you're shooting in a darker surrounding like the attic or at dusk or dawn. The barrel is 49.5 centimeters long. The whole gun is pretty long with 123 centimeters, so you need quite some wingspan to break the barrel. It weighs 3.8 kilogram which is quite moderate for the size. Um, there are guns which are like 10-15 centimeters shorter and weigh the same. Over here we have the before mentioned fully adjustable rear sight with the two green fiber optic sticks. Um, here you can see the system with the beautiful logo Diana Mod 350 Classic T06. T06 is the fully adjustable Diana trigger, um, a high quality and, and very good trigger with an adjustable trigger weight of 400 to 500 gram. Um, together with the Weidauch match trigger record, it is top tier in hobby shooting. Here you can see a fitted 11 millimeter prism rail. Personally, I like the milled rails a bit better. Um, the advantage here is that your scope is raised a bit higher over the system, so you don't need uh, higher mounts. Here I'm using a medium height mount, um, should be the TO35C from Sportsmatch UK. Uh, you can buy this as well as the scope at diabolo.de. I'm using the Hawk MX Compact 3 to 12 times 40. I re reviewed this one already, um, you know the mounts already and you can buy the gun at my partner Action Shop 24. Just pay them a visit, you can buy this gun and a lot more including software guns and so on um, and my Air Gundy products there. Um, back here we can see the automatic safety. It uh, activates while breaking the barrel and has to be deactivated before every shot. It's placed perfectly in the center, so you can reach it with both the left and the right thumb. All the way in the back, the butt plate. I talked a lot already, now let's hop over to the trigger weight test. First I'm grabbing my safety glasses. I open a box of Air Gandhi's finest. Um, I'm shooting these in all Diana and Weidauch guns because they perform great. Switching it on. Changing to kilogram and gram. Now I'm breaking the barrel and while I'm doing this uh, I remember something more to say. We have a ball lock here. Okay, I'm switching the safety off. Don't panic. In there's my shooting cabinet so I can just shoot in there. And you can see the trigger weight of 435 gram. We'll see the impact of the trigger weight 
in the shooting test. Um, but before that, we go for the. Uh, whoop. Something stuck. And here we go. Let's do the crony test. <laughs> this is the crony test with the Diana 350 Magnum Classic. Airgun is finest, 0 0.56 gram. Same Diabolos we'll use for the shooting test later. Let's start, check consistency and power. Okay, let's take the final shot. Let's see what we've got here. 10 shots, average power of 7.98 joule. Don't stress yourself. If you did not manipulate the gun, that's in the tolerance area. It has its F license like this. There are variances by using different Diabolos with RWS, for example, it should be a little slower. Everything is fine as long as you don't manipulate anything. Average speed 169 meters from 161 to 174. That's a deviation of 30 meters with an average deviation of the median of 3 meters per second. How will this affect the bullet spread? We'll see you in the shooting test. Have fun guys! Shooting test Diana 350 Magnum Classic. Let's start. Airgun is finest, 0 0.56 gram again. Distance is 11 yards, 10 meters. Shooting at the Spot Quantum SQ10. Let's go. You need a, a little force to break the barrel. But you're getting used to it, yeah. Recoil is medium to strong, with a tendency to medium, I'd say. The trigger is really good, right out of the box. Nice, nice pre-travel, um, trigger pull. There's no, no creeping, uh, really made well for precise results. Oh, this one went a bit far out. You, you see the consistency after 80 to 100 shots I took with it. Give it another 500 shots and it will get even more consistent. Um, just, just keep filling the barrel with some good lead, so to say, um, and it will get even better. 
You may wonder why I'm cocking the rifle a bit awkwardly here. It's uh, because I want to stay in the frame the whole time. And yeah, this plus sitting makes it look a bit clunky, maybe. If you are standing, it is way more comfortable than at the table. Um, it's, this works well, but yeah, due to the length, you just have to adapt a bit. And I probably could go two clicks to the left with my setup. I think I'll do that, yeah. One more shot and the first 10 are done. Then I'll go two clicks left on the, on the MX Compact 3 to 12 times 40. Even if this one was perfect. <laughs> Still going two to the left. I'm I'm aiming where I hit the most with my crosshair. And yeah, this is how you can get closer and closer to the perfect spot. It's way easier with the PCP because you can rest it or even mount it somewhere and take a few shots and yeah, basically be done with it. With the brake barrel it is harder, you take a few shots and then adapt again and so on, but you'll work it out. But yeah, you can shoot this rifle really precisely, no question. There's a nice learning curve. You find out really fast um, what the gun wants from you. Yeah, what's the recoil. Um, yeah, how, how do you have to hold it? It's, it's not very sensitive there. Of course, with uh, brake barrels, you always try to hold it the same way, place it the same, use the same pressure on your shoulder, grip it with the same strength and so on. Uh, so try that all three touch points with the body are the same every time. But yeah, as you can see, it is not touchy. Uh, like yeah like other guns that, that they only work in one specific position and react to the smallest change but not not this diana <laughs> look at it now uh, it is set up good and i just shot four tens in a row while talking That one was a bit high. Where are we? Six shots of the second run, yeah. And the next ten. Too high again, but you can see um, after a few days of, of getting used to it, it's really, really good. Oh no, <laughs> great, I blew the 19th shot.
Now I want some compensation for the last one. Okay, that's a 10. Fine. I'd say this is really good and the gun is fun to shoot. Let's head to the result. This is the result for the Diana 350 Magnum Classic. I think I didn't promise too much. The gun is a ton of fun. It looks really good. I hope you enjoy the close-ups. You need a little power to break the barrel and to control the recoil. Um, otherwise, it is a high quality made in Germany rifle that deserves a place in your shooting cabinet. I recommend it to all hobby shooters and plinkers. I don't see it in uh, competitions since you prefer to have adjustable components like a cheek piece and so on. But not everybody wants to shoot competitively. As a matter of fact, only a handful of people want to. <laughs> if you want to shoot in your attic or garden following legal restrictions uh, or at the shooting range with this Diana, you have a partner for life if you take good care of it. I hope you were entertained and you will tune in again next week for my next video. Thank you for your time. Visit jabolo.de and actionshop24.de. You'll find everything you need. Thanks a lot. Ciao, servus, says Ergandi.